Good morning. A local church is to have an ongoing widows list whereby we make note of those faithful, believing women who've grown older and they don't have children, grandchildren, relatives, or friend to help take care of them. They can't take full care of themselves, so we as their church family are to help care for them. Got it. First Timothy 5, it's clear. But what about a younger woman whose husband dies? I mean, in the New Testament times, the average lifespan was 35. Yeah, some lived longer lives, but most did not. What about a woman who's married, likely in her teens, and her husband dies? Should she be placed on the church's widow's list? And Paul counsels Timothy, no, she should not. So why would that be? Well, practically, it's likely that she and her husband lived on her parents' homestead so she could just remain without him, and the parents, perhaps even grandparents, would resume their watch care of her and any children. That's the way it worked back then. But there's more that should be addressed with a widow. She's a younger woman, and Paul will explain that in his directives. He writes in verse 11, but refuse to enroll younger widows. What's interesting is that word refuse also means to ask alongside. It's a picture of someone coming alongside and ministering to a young widow. So let's think that through today. First, who would do that? Well, likely an older widow or perhaps a deacon and wife. Remember the deacons in Acts chapter 6 who were raised up to minister in a widow's situation. Well, what issues would they address with her? That's what Paul writes. Verse 11, For when their passions draw them away from Christ, they desire to marry, and so incur condemnation for having abandoned their former faith. Now, now what does that mean? Well, let's explain. A widow, having experienced intimacy with her husband, will have awakened those desires. The temptation to be immoral will be great, and if she gives in, she could draw away from Christ. So come alongside her. Talk to her about her desires and marriage. An older widow could help her understand those desires and encourage her to remember that marriage is a wonderful gift from God, and he might give her another husband. They could pray, and after she had appropriate time to grieve her loss, they could together look to God for a faithful man to love and lead her, to marry her, talk with her about this. That's great advice. What else? Well, in her grief, she may be tempted to draw away from Christ, so talk to her about maturing in Christ. Widowhood could be a time to focus on her walk with Jesus, to press in to him, to find strength and comfort from him. And then, what might tempt a young widow to abandon her former faith? Well, in context, it's the death of her husband. So talk to her about mercy. That is, not resenting the Lord who allowed her husband to die. She must refuse bitterness in the loss of her loved one. That's huge in the healing process. So the idea, I love this, minister to a young widow in her time of grief. You know, over the years, I've noticed that once the funeral is over, a widow can be forgotten as folks move on with their lives and forget her challenge of moving on without her husband. That's why I love the way God inspired Paul to write this. There's more, and we'll look at it tomorrow, but for today, let's all again think of a widow we know. Let's pray for her, and perhaps, again, reach out to her, encourage her, maybe break bread with her, find some way to minister to her. And uh, for all of us, let's look to the Lord this day for his spirit to lead us, strengthen us, and use us to minister to all we would meet on our way. Let's pray. Lord, today we are yours. 
lead us by your spirit. Use us to be a blessing and encouragement. We pray. You continue. God bless you. Thank you for listening to Mornings with Pastor Jim. This podcast is a ministry of Family Church PC. For more information or to contact us, go to familychurchpc.com. Have a blessed day.